of a viewer question. So uh, one viewer question I've had come up in the past, uh, we all use services like uh, Gmail and, and many type of mail services. You might have services through your enterprise uh, that provide you uh, mail services. A lot of people like to host their own, own at-home servers. I've got a Windows 2003 server here, another one in the closet. I've got some asterisk server, I mean uh, Linux-based servers that I have around the place. But uh, the question was, how can I host my own mail server? So viewer question, how can I host my own mail server? One product that I've used in the past to do this is a product called Mail Enable. Uh, if you haven't seen Mail Enable, I recommend that you check it out. Uh, I'm going to post the link in the chat there, but you can get it at MailEnable.com. That's M-A-I-L-E-N-A-B-L-E dot -E -E C-O-M. Mail Enable is a, uh, a, a free, or they have a free version of a robust SMTP and POP uh, mail server that will run on Windows NT, Windows 2000, XP, or 2003 systems. It's simple to install. It's got powerful administration uh, software that m means that your mail server will be up and running quickly. There's a free edition that contains no spyware or adware, and uh, it's for both personal and commercial usage. So this server, I, I, I've used it, and uh, it's, it's great. You know, if you want to set up your own mail server, download Mail, Ena mail Enable and load it on uh, one of your boxes, and boom, you're up and running. I've got uh, in the show notes, I'll have a link to the, the feature list, but you can get it all on MailEnable.com. Um, it goes on to say some of the, the information that I put into my uh, show notes here say that you can run uh, a server with 2,000 users on it on an Intel P3 500 megahertz with 256 megs of RAM. So if you just are looking for a home mail server to handle uh, some quick uh, you know, mail, uh, mail usage, uh, it will work just fine. I used to use it to host maybe a half dozen domain names and kind of host uh, mail services from like my friends and family uh, type mail uh, requirements. So the standard edition is uh, free for both, like I said, for both personal and commercial use. It, you can use unlimited domain names and unlimited mailboxes. Then they go on to have a professional edition, an enterprise edition, and a support bundle. And uh, then another one that I wanted to talk about here is uh, that I found. I have not used this one, but it's called Mojo, Mojo Dio. <laughs> Let me post the link. That's uh, M-A-J-O-D-I-O. And uh, it's another uh, Windows-based mail server application that, again, offers quality SMTP and POP uh, mail services and supports uh, a handful of features. This one requires also Windows 2000 XP, 2003, It'll run on a 350 megahertz box with 256 megs of RAM and one gig of disk space. Um, you can check that out. And it, uh, it, it's claimed to be also a very good quality, free, enterprise quality SMTP and POP mail server solution. So, um, so I, yeah, I host mail services at my house and I'm running on uh, Verizon DSL. So if you, uh, that's something that Chat brought up is that uh, he's saying most ISPs will block specific ports. So in some cases you may have to tweak with the ports and or you may have uh, concerns or uh, issues with your particular ISP blocking certain ports, which would mean you would need to upgrade to like a business account. So if you're running on a standard consumer account, I know Fios, uh, the new Verizon Fios, they do a lot of port blocking to keep people from using their at-home services for running servers and that sort of thing. So also uh, another, another couple of services that uh, I was going to mention here was uh, some exchange alternatives. Um, there's one called PostPath. Um, you can check that out at postpath.com. This is a pay mail server. It's Linux-based, 
And it's uh, the, the beauty of this one is if you look at the total cost of ownership on a mail server, an exchange mail server, let's just say for the purpose of example, can cost you uh, $250,000 to maintain over a, a period of time where this Linux-based mail server called PostPath is an exchange alternative and will cost you about one-fifth of the cost that, uh, that you would pay to, host a, to, to run your own exchange environment. Um, so check that out at postpath.com. Let me post that into uh, chat here real quick. That's again p o s t p a t h dot c o m. Uh, and then, of course, I couldn't go without saying this. Uh, if you're looking just for an you know an external hosted solution, you might check out Google. And Google offer has a great uh, setup for enterprise mail. Uh, uh, service and you can check out Google's uh, uh, products at that link. Um, so I know someone said at the beginning of this discussion, I use Google and they work fine and uh, you might just check that out. So uh, and there it is again, McKee, Google Apps is the best. So I use Gmail and uh, for a lot of my personal mail services, but this is kind of a middle of the road if you run a business out of your house and uh, you're on a small budget and you want to have your own dedicated mail server or you're just interested in getting some more familiarity with running your own mail server, I really recommend Mail Enable. But again, those other uh, applications I mentioned you may want to check out, i.e. the, the Moji, Moj, Mojo Dio or uh, the PostPath or like we said, just use Google services. So Gmail is great and uh, Hopefully one of those work for you or bring you some information. But uh, mail enables free, but it's all Windows based. So I know the tech buzz, <laughs> you like you like iMac and McKee, you're on a Mac too. So mail enable won't work for you guys. But you got, I mean, it doesn't have, you know, the nice thing about mail enable too, 2,000 users on a 500 megahertz Pentium 3. That is pretty beautiful to be able to <laughs> run. 2,000 users, so you could take an old box that you've decommissioned as a as an old server, and you could you could reallocate it as a dedicated mail server. Um, so let's uh, move on in this program here. What I like to do now is uh, talk about my show sponsor. So this week's show sponsor is Guitar Center. If you guys are interested in uh, buying any guitar equipment, musical instruments, or musical electronics, I recommend that you go to guitarcenter.com or check out uh, shop.highweb.net and or this link that I just posted in the chat and uh, you can get great deals on products through Guitar Center. IWeb also gets uh, gets a small commission if you uh, purchase through my link, and uh, I'm going to type this in Guitar Center Shop Guitar Center. I type in the chat, and my bot should come back and give a little plug about Guitar Center. Also, right now they've got free shipping on orders over 99 bucks. I buy lots of stuff from Guitar Center. I bought my mixer from Guitar Center um, and various other things. I bought actually my bass guitar, my bass amp. I've got an entire music studio in the other room that I bought all of my equipment from Guitar Center. So happy to have them on board as one of the uh, High Web affiliate ship partners, and uh, we'll continue to work with them. Also, uh, if you're interested in any other any of my other affiliate ship marketing partners, just click on that link shop.highweb.net and you can see the entire list of my affiliate ship partners and again get great deals on products and uh, and or services from those uh, companies. And this at this point while we also put a shout out to Ustream. I'd like to thank Ustream for putting together this uh, great video uh, streaming resource and making it easy for anyone to uh, broadcast yourself. So uh, Ustream live interactive video for everyone. Let's uh, hold that up there for a second. And uh, also, let's put a shout out here to uh, the Tech Buzz for uh, uh, just being a, a good community member on the UStream network and uh, doing all he does for uh, for uh, 
for the community at large. And let's put a shout out to Who Knew. Who Knew runs uh, Blue Phoenix, and uh, he's another good uh, community member on uh, Ustream and that sort of thing.